Yo, what's good, man? So we're going to talk about a couple of different things today, you know, how to find your perfect setup. Uh, I'm going to give you an idea of a perfect setup right now on the screen, all right? So check this out. Looking at this, this is an ideal perfect setup. I'm going to tell you why. The candles are above this 200, meaning it's uptrend, all right? We got the uptrend. Stochastic is low. Now, I'm on the H1, which is even better. I mean, you know. M15, H1, whatever. Any high time frame is giving you these setups. It's a go. But this right here, all right, stochastic is already low, letting you know the market's getting ready to go up. Signals over here is starting to say buy. I mean, it's just giving you like, hey, the buy is coming. So if I want to mark this up, like I said, M15 or H1, either one. You know, lately I've been doing M15 and H1. You know what I'm saying? It just depends. I switch it up. For the most part, same same concept, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes you might want to go a little higher. All right? So ideal setup. This is how you just, just eat the market up all the time. They ask me, how you be calling these signals like you do, bro? I be like, look, I just marked them zones up just right. Now we look at the N15 and I say, okay, well, we already hitting the zone. All right? The candles on the, uh, I mean, are about a 200 on the N15 as well, right? So since that's the case... Now, I just got to find out where I want to enter. So, I do see a little zone in between here. So, let me show y'all this. I do see, like, a little bit of zone in here that I didn't really touch, which I don't really got to do that. But, you know, a lot of times I will do it just because, you know, I want to make sure I'm hitting every angle. All right? And I will tell y'all that, boy, listen, if the market ain't giving you what you wanted to give, you know, sometimes you just got to come back. The next day, or maybe just a little bit later, if you didn't hit your goal or you didn't hit your, your lost goal, yeah, you might have to come back a little bit later. Because today was ugly. Let me tell you something about today. Today was an ugly trading day. Let me show you. 60 trades to make $400? Whew. It's an ugly day. That was ugly. Uh, I was only I was willing to go down to like 5000 on this account, um, but I didn't get there, so I kept going, which is good. But I'm done, you know, of course. Got to come back the next day. Now, I go here to the M1, and what do I see? I see the market starting to head down. But at least I got a rule of thumb. Because now that I know that it's already in the zone of a higher time frame, it's already in this H1 zone, M15 zone, whatever this is, right? It's already in there. So we know this is high rejection zone. So between here and this zone is down here, this blue, Right, which you still got to push down more to reveal that line. But in between there, I know I'm I'm buying. You know what I'm saying? Look at the signals over here. The signals is telling me too. Like, look, bro, it's about buy time. It's getting close. All right. So that's all it is now. And then I'm just waiting. So I might have to because sometimes you might catch a little zone in somewhere in here in between the zones. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let me go to the N15. And let me zoom in just a little bit. So I'm seeing rejection inside of here. I'm seeing where the candle is. Let me zoom in on this candle so y'all can see. This is where the market is currently over here to the left. The market is on these, these two candles right here. Because I can see the line vis, uh, visually right there. All right. So if it continues down, it's going to reject off of this candle and this candle, which is the same line. If you draw that across, all right? So that that's kind of where I put other smaller zones in the midst of it, just to kind of visually see more rejection points. But see, with it being green, you want to change that color to like orange. And I might like do 2px, all right? But here here's the rejection zones here, these two candles. So now when I go back to the M1, Oh, it already, yeah, it's already bouncing off of that and already going up. All right, so this will be a good, you know, potential buy area right here. If it continues down, we know where it's headed to because we already got those references. But since it don't look like it's heading down, you know, let me do a dollar, you know what I'm saying, because I already made my money today. I'm done. But let me kind of do a dollar. Actually, I'm actually getting in pretty late on this OTC, so we're going to see if it work out. But just to show you, because the best entry would be down here, of course. We know that right off the zone. And that's what I want to tell you. Make sure when you enter, you enter off the zone or as close to the zone as possible. 
All right. So yeah, I got a late entry on this one. So definitely was that's expected. Unless it decided to want to keep going up right now. But late entry, so that's fine. And if it continues down, which I think it will because of this, the zigzag has not formed this way. Right? So, which lets me know it's still got a little more room to go down before it goes up. But I do get in early sometimes because you just never know. You know, we getting that that rejection there. So, hey, if you see it, if the market give you what it's going to give you, you take it. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you put in your little tester. So, right now, that's a little tester. If it continues down, then I know where it's going. All right, allergies cutting up. Ooh. But, yeah. So, that's that's where it's headed. And that's this is – oh, let me take this off right here. Boom. So, I can zoom back out. But yeah, so this is this is where it's at, and if it continues, then it'll come back up. If it doesn't break this, it's going back up. If it breaks it, then we're going to come down even further, and then we already got those zones at the bottom. So this bottom piece is what, you know, plays a part in it. This is, you know, a zone as well. The bottom of the Keltner is like a zone. It bounces off and rejects off that too. So we'll see. You know, maybe they'll give it to us. But that's that's why the four-inchy rule is so important because if you do the four-inchy rule based off of zones, it'll usually, you know, work out and be good for you. I got, what, 18 seconds, 15 seconds on this on this pair? Yeah, and it, and it looked like it's stalling out. So is this going to be the trade that, that finally goes? Let's see. I'm going to do $2 right here and see if we can get it. But usually when the market is moving sideways like this, it's not really a good time to get in and keep it under with y'all. So as y'all can see, it's too much, too much rejection. When you see a whole lot of rejection to the left and right, the best place to get in is at the bottom because if you get in during momentum, as I always say, you know, you can, you can get that heavy retracement and it could just play around and reject and reject and reject the whole time. But, you know, if you see it again, if you see your setup and you see it, go ahead and just take the trade. It is what it is, you feel me? But uh, anytime the market is going against you far away, like it's going farther and farther away from you. Let me refresh this so I can uh, zoom out because it's ain't tripping. But anytime it's going farther and farther away from your entry, I'm to my, uh, my zones, bro. We haven't refreshed this thing a couple of times to get my zones. There you go. But, yeah, anytime it's going farther and farther away from your entry, that's when the four-entry rule comes in. You know what I'm saying? But right now, the only reason why I kept getting in is because this did not break. The candles did not break over here. They did not break the zone right here. If it would have broke and closed below, then I probably would have just waited until it hit another zone. But since it did reject again and start going back up, that's why I got in again. So just keep that in mind, y'all, as y'all trading. If it doesn't break a zone and it and continues back in that direction, then you get back in again. You know what I'm saying? But if it, you know... Yeah, if it doesn't break the zone, you get back in again. If it does, you just wait until it hits the next zone. So that's what it is. So this one is looking like a success if it holds out. But we got rejection still coming up all in here. All this is rejection in here. So as long as we hold out for another 11 seconds, we're going to be all right. But all this is rejection, so it's pushing. We good. Easy money. This would have been a pretty decent trade if I would have, uh, you know. But I'm done for the day I told y'all. <laughs> I'm done. But see, that that's the kind of trades I'm talking about. That's how you read your chart. That's how you mark it up. And that's how you eat in the markets every day. So that's all I'm doing. Top-down analysis. I'm looking. And and if people keep asking me, uh, like, they say, why do you, you know, what is each indicator for? I didn't told you. <laughs> I didn't told you a million times. But if you're new, let me tell you. So I got this zigzag on here. I got this Keltner channel, which is this blue shadow. I got this 200 EMA moving average, and I got my stochastic. Each one plays a vital role in what I got going on. You know what I'm saying? So this uh, Keltner channel, which is this blue one, it gives me points. So I'm going to show you. You have the top of it, the middle, and the bottom. All right? If you notice, where does, the, where does these candlesticks, the green and the red, where do these go? All right, they go a little bit above the middle of the Keltner. All right, they go above. They didn't quite touch the top. They didn't quite reach up here, and then it drops. Goes a little bit above the middle, drop. Sometimes hits the middle, drop. 
a little bit above the middle, drop. So that's just the patterns that it's giving me. So now I know, okay, well, and even down here at the bottom, as you can see, it did the exact same thing again. A little bit above the middle, drop. That has been the pattern of this pair. So what does that tell me? Majority of the time, if it's a downtrend as well, every time we do that pullback and go a little bit of, uh, to the middle of the Keltner or a little bit above it, we know we're selling. So if I sold early here thinking it was going to drop and it didn't, it rose up, that's about second entry, third entry, all right? Second entry, third entry, by that time we get the drop. Boom, all right? So that's what the Keltner channel is for, all right? The zigzag is basically, you could use the zigzag for a couple different things. You could use it for support and resistance. Every point here is a zone, and all you got to do is just draw your line. I mean, you ain't got to draw it, but, you know, use your, your indicators or whatever for your support and resistance zones. You can use it for points. Catch the bottom of that point all the way to the bottom of that point, all right? And these are your zones. So you can do the same thing at the top. You can use it for that, and then you can also use it to pretty much predict where price is going to go next for the most part. And what I mean by that is uh, you can see the zigzag, boom, it has to form. This zigzag formed this way, pushed the market down, but it did not continue down to connect another zigzag this way. So it's indecisive, doesn't really know where it want to go. But this letting me know that the market could come down here and form another zigzag. That's what that's letting me know. All right. So that's what I use that for. All right. I use the stochastic for overbought, oversold. When the market is up here, I'm looking for the market to drop, especially on the downtrend. If we low down here, I'm looking for the market to go up. And again, we can line this directly. I can go straight up in a straight line and see where the buy happened. Boom. Low, we got the buy. So that's why I use that. I use all those for different reasons. Now, I just put it all together. And then I also can throw in the, I use these signals too as another confirmation. A lot of times when these are double arrow green and most of them are green in a row, then I'm using that as confirmation, lining up with everything else I got going on. So that's the best way to trade the market, y'all, every single day. If you do that every, every time, you're going to eat. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I'm calling my signals um, when I'm calling them. Marking up the H1, finding the perfect setups. Again, if I show you on the H1 how this was a perfect setup for buys, and it still is, it's going to probably have a lot of buy opportunities on this because it's the H1. So this is going to have a lot of buy opportunities. Reason being, stochastic low. All right. We're already on the uptrend, and we're already hitting zones. So if I, bought, if I did an hour trade, I probably can catch it up here. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do an hour trade because that ain't what I do. But that's like a long-term trade because since it's the hour chart, we can get that buy going up. You know what I'm saying? But you can see those kind of setups too on the smaller time frames. And when you see it, you take the trade. You ain't got to hesitate. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's just my spiel for the day. Real quick, before I get off of here, I do want to show y'all something that will help you. I already showed my paid group uh, this, but I want to show y'all as well on here. So, Another thing you could do to protect your money as you're making profits, all right, is you go here, okay, you want to click on this double arrow right here. Click on that, and whenever you're making profits every day, I do the same thing on, in the Forex market. Whenever you're making profits every day, you can move your profits over here to this MT5 Live. We're not doing that to trade it. We're just doing it to store it like a wallet like you do have on Forex. So, for instance, all I got to do, okay, I got that there. Let's say I, whatever amount I want to do, let's say I do a dollar, it's instantly going to move a dollar over here. You see? Just instantly move the dollar in there. So now, boom, I go back here, you can see a dollar in there. So every profit you make every day can be moved straight over there, right, if you want to do it like that. Now, I do that when I'm trying to withdraw every week. By the end of the week, I'll do that so that way I don't risk my profits, you know what I'm saying, all day. Um, I'm just, my profits are stored, and then at the end of the week, I can move that back and withdraw it. Uh, that's just kind of like a you know risk management type of thing as well that you could do. But I do that all the time. Uh, but right now I'm compounding, so I'm not really moving money over there. But when I decide to withdraw every week, I'm going to move large amounts over here. All my profits that I make pretty much all throughout the week. And on like Thursday or Friday, I'll make a withdrawal. And, and that's how you can do that. All right. And you can easily move the money back by doing the same thing. You'll just have to do 
MT5 Live, and then you'll move your dollar back, hit confirm, and it's gonna move it directly back to here, to your balance, all right? So, if you are not live trading with us, you should. We love you live trade every week, you know what I'm saying, with each other. So, you might wanna click that link below and get started. You feel me? All right? I love y'all, man, and uh, I'll see you on another video. Lego.